Hi, and welcome to Body Metrics, the show that teaches you practical ways to incorporate nutrition into your busy lifestyle. My name is Adrienne Delgado, and I am a registered dietitian in our community. Today, I invited my colleague Heather to join me so we could get into the ins and outs of sports nutrition. For many of your students, sports are a great way to get physical activity, learn what it means to be part of a team, and even manage stress and anxiety. For some student athletes, it means a partial or fully paid college experience. What you eat around exercise matters. Most games are won or lost in the final few minutes, and the athletes with the greatest endurance usually come out on top. How your body feels for that endurance is the key between wins and losses. So today's episode, we're gonna give you the details on why nutrition is important, how to hydrate properly, and what to eat before and after workouts. And just like all of our episodes, we'll wrap up our time together with a quick, easy recipe that puts your student athlete in a position of success. Now, before we get too far into the practical take-home tips, I wanna just take a second and explain to you why this nutrition business is so important. I truly feel that if you understand the whys, you're more likely to implement the suggestions given. So let's take this over to Heather and let her explain exactly what nutrition does for your body. Thanks, Adrian. Often I hear that my child can eat whatever he wants because he's so active. But nutrition isn't just about weight, it's also about health. It's about building a strong body, immune system, and skeleton from the inside out. A solid diet foundation needs to be a priority because athletes are unlikely to be the best if they're sick or injured. What you eat on a day-to-day -day basis is just as important as what you eat around practices and games. Every day it's important to eat foods that provide the body with all six essential nutrients so it can function efficiently and optimally. Athletes especially should have an understanding of these nutrients so they can perform at their peak level. So here are some of the basics. Number one, carbohydrates. These are the preferred source of fuel for the working muscles and provide a steady source of energy to feed the brain and nervous system. It's also important to have endurance, but make good decisions during this event as well. Number two, protein. This helps to build, maintain, and repair muscles. Three are the fats, which are going to help absorb nutrients, provide essential fatty acids, protect organs, and can serve as an insulator. Four is water. The body needs water more than any other nutrient. Water transports nutrients throughout the body and it removes waste products of metabolism. It functions as a lubricant and it can help cool the body. And then finally we have vitamins and minerals, numbers five and six, also known as micronutrients. Now these do not provide energy, but they are necessary to unlock the energy and carbs, proteins and fats. Great, so as you can see, all of these nutrients serve an important purpose. If you are interested in more specific requirements for your student athlete, meeting with a registered dietitian can help tailor a program to his or her needs. When we come back from this short break, we will tackle the specifics of pre and post workout nutrition, how to hydrate properly, and even give the adults some tips on how to eat healthy when cheering your student athlete on from the stands. We'll be right back. They call me Maxi, but I prefer tripod. I was your above average four-legged homie and then wham, bam, minivan. Some people pity me. Now that's lame. I still run, fetch, and swim. And the ladies love me. I'm the ultimate wingman. Just don't ask me to high five. I'm a scientist. Recycling takes a team. Why don't you let me and me help you out? Everyone plays a part. Don't trash. I love taking stuff apart and building new things out of it. What could be treasure? How's my most advanced android? <gasps> this is awesome. You haven't seen anything yet. Give your cardboard box another life. Recycle. Hi. And welcome back to Body Metrics. Today we are diving into sports nutrition and how to perform your best at both practice and games. In our office, we see tons of high school and college athletes trying to get the competitive edge by cleaning up their diets. So we wanted to bring some of that information to you since it's definitely a hot topic. Now the three reasons why you wanna eat something before you work out are, 
Number one, help prevent hypoglycemia, which is low blood sugar. Symptoms of low blood sugar include lightheadedness, fatigue, blurred vision, indecisiveness. Obviously, none of these symptoms are desirable when trying to perform your best. Number two, it helps settle your stomach by absorbing gastric juices, keeping hunger away, and finally, number three, it fuels your muscles. Most people are afraid to eat before they exercise because they are afraid it will result in an upset stomach or they may feel sluggish on the field. But the truth is, too much of the wrong foods will cause intestinal issues, and lack of fuel is what leads to sluggish performance. So when it comes to eating beforehand, what you choose to eat and timing is key. Here are a couple things to consider. Number one, what to eat and how much varies from person to person and sport to sport. For example, a cross-country athlete may only be able to tolerate small amounts of food, while a javelin thrower can tolerate more simply due to the type of activity they are engaging in. I know some people who can get away with eating a half of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich before running eight miles without any issues, and other people who can only stomach gulps of Gatorade. There is no magic one-size-fits-all, and each athlete has to learn what works best for them through trial and error. Number two, if you will be exercising for more than 60 to 90 minutes and unable to consume calories during that time, choose slow digested carbs that will provide a steady supply of energy over the next 90 minutes. For example, yogurt, bananas, oatmeal, bean soups, lentils, and apples are some great ideas. Number three, limit high fat proteins like cheeseburgers and fried foods that will sit in your stomach for long amounts of time. This can lead to your stomach to compete with muscles for blood flow and cause cramping. High fat foods may also make your student athlete feel nauseous, especially if his or her sport involves a lot of running. Number four, be cautious with sugary foods, which may cause a decrease in energy 30 minutes into your event due to an influx of insulin. And number five, allow adequate time for food to digest. Number six, allow more digestion time before intense exercise. And seven, if you have a finicky stomach, experiment with liquid meal replacers. Number eight, if you have a magic food, meaning a food that works for you, be sure to pack it along with you when traveling. Number nine, always eat familiar foods before a competition. Never choose game day to try something new. Now, I brought some foods to show you that may be helpful when trying to figure out exactly what to eat. If you are 60 to 90 minutes from your practice or game, try a peanut butter sandwich. Uh, you can also put honey on that, or you can get a whole wheat tortilla, spread some peanut butter on there, add a banana, honey, roll it up, you're good to go. You can also try some hummus with crackers or a whole grain pita. Uh, you can try a variety of bars, Luna, Kind Bars. Now a quick note about energy bars or sports bars. You can use them, but don't be fooled by all the fancy claims they make about certain compounds providing extra energy. The energy you get from them is because of the calories, not the magic ingredients. To save money, stick to foods you can buy at the grocery store. You could also choose a piece of fruit and a handful of almonds, or even some whole grain pretzels. If you need to eat within an hour of your practice or game, try some dried fruit or some single serve yogurt, some squeezy applesauce, or even some trail mix. Uh, you can buy a pre-made trail mix or make your own with whole grain cereal, dried fruit, and a few nuts or seeds. The key here is choose quick, easy to digest carbs if you're in that hour window. If you have a longer time before the event, you can add some protein since you have more time to digest. Adding just six grams of protein before a workout has been shown to aid in recovery. Here are some more guidelines. If you have a 3 p.m. event, like a field hockey or lacrosse game, you can either have a big high carbohydrate breakfast and a light lunch or a substantial lunch if you're eating by 10 a.m. So this only works if you have first lunch. All large meals need roughly four hours to digest. Make sure you eat a high carbohydrate dinner the night before and drink extra fluids the day before and up to noon on the day of the event. 
If you have an eight o'clock event, like a football or basketball game, you can digest a hefty high carbohydrate breakfast and lunch by evening. Make sure you plan for dinner as tolerated by five o'clock or have a light meal between six and seven. Be sure to drink extra fluids all day to help you do your best. Now, if you have an all day weekend tournament, first and foremost, be sure to eat a carbohydrate rich meals at breakfast, lunch, and dinner the day before and drink extra fluid. On the day of the event, eat a tried and true breakfast depending on tolerance. While exercising, at least every one and a half to two hours, plan to eat carbohydrate-based foods like energy bars, dried fruits, or even sports drinks to maintain normal blood sugar levels. Drink fluids before you get thirsty. You will need to urinate at least three times throughout the day. So speaking of hydration, let's move our attention uh, to know the more ins and outs of that because this is a critical piece in an athlete's performance. Heather? Thanks, Adrian. There is no cheaper, simpler, or more effective way to help with performance and protect health than staying hydrated during exercise. In adults, just a 2% loss of body weight due to fluids has been shown to have an adverse effect on performance. And in children, these effects are thought to occur sooner with just a 1% decrease in body weight. This is especially true in hot and humid conditions. The most important thing to recognize are the signs of dehydration, which include headache, nausea, irritability, cramping, and fatigue, just to name a few. Be sure to monitor your urine color. A general rule of this is it should be a pale yellow-like lemonade color and not an apple juice color. Be sure to encourage your children to drink during their activities. An easy way to remember how much is to measure in gulps. One gulp is roughly the equivalent of one ounce. So for a nine to 12 year old, they should drink three to eight ounces, which is three to eight gulps every 20 minutes. Older adolescents need 35 to 40 ounces per hour or 12 gulps every 20 minutes. Electrolyte supplemented beverages, such as a Gatorade, are generally only needed when exercise is long, somewhere over an hour or if they have a repeated day session or it's really hot and humid weather. Plain water is usually the best choice. When we come back, we'll talk more on post-workout recovery, healthy dining out tips when you need a quick meal before or after practice, and what to eat when cheering your child on from the stands. <laughs> to Maddie, congrats on paying off all those student loans. Finally, right? How'd you manage that anyway? I started tracking my spending, changed a couple of habits. Wow. I'm kind of living paycheck to paycheck right now. <laughs> I don't even know how I'm doing it. Well, have you tried saving a little? <laughs> I want to, but where's that money gonna come from? <laughs> Bill collectors, they're the worst. Am I right? When it comes to financial <laughs> stability, don't get left behind. Not home. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. Got a quarter? Hi, and welcome back to Body Metrics. Right before the break, we talked about what to eat before an event and hydration. Now let's turn our attention to after practice. First and foremost, your top priority after a workout is hydration. So be sure to focus on water until your urine is clear and copious. That just means a lot. To optimize glycogen replacement, and this is just a fancy way of saying fill your energy stores back up, consume carbohydrate rich foods within 15 minutes of your workout. You have up to an hour, but those first 15 minutes are key because this is when enzymes responsible for making glycogen are most active. Don't forget to add a little protein here too because protein enhances glycogen replacement. A good rule of thumb is to aim for a carbohydrate to protein ratio of three to one. Here are some examples of what that can look like. We have here, you can use a half a cup of plain Greek yogurt, with your choice of mix-ins like fresh fruit or flaxseed or chia seeds. 
Uh, you could do some whole grain bread with peanut butter. You can add a banana to that. Or you can do some cottage cheese and a banana or mixed fruit of your choice. One to two hard boiled eggs would work nice with some fruit. We have bananas, apples, grapes, your choice. Or you can do half of a turkey sandwich with veggies. Some people like to drink something right away. You could do a six to eight ounce smoothie made with milk or Greek yogurt and fruit. Or an easy and probably most popular choice would be eight ounces of chocolate milk. Or dinner can work if your family is ready to eat right after practice. A snack is only necessary if it's going to be longer than that hour before dinner time. Now it's important to take the time and talk about protein because it gets a lot of attention, especially with student athletes. I know some people think that if I eat a lot of protein, I will build a lot of muscle. And the truth here is that protein doesn't build muscle, exercise does. Yes, it's true. You need adequate amounts of protein daily, but the body does not store excessive amounts as protein or amino acids, but rather as glycogen or fat. Athletes need only slightly more protein than non-athletes to repair and build new muscle tissue. In theory, if you want to gain one pound of muscle per week, you only need 14 extra grams of protein per day. Now parents, we didn't forget about you either. I spend many weekends myself at soccer games and tournaments and I have witnessed firsthand the lack of healthy options at the snack bars. So while today's main focus has been the student athlete, I wanted to br briefly discuss with parents um, some of your options when you're on the field. So many of the clients that I work with are parents and one of their biggest challenges can be hectic schedules that include driving to and from games and practices all week and weekend long. The last thing you want to do is undo all of your healthy eating during the week on the weekend. So your best defense is going to be packing your own portable pantry. That means filling a cooler bag of healthy options for yourself. So options include the carbohydrates. So I have some here like applesauce, there's fresh uh, fruit or dried fruit, rice, rice cakes, whole grain crackers. Um, now let's start thinking about your protein. So that could be something like string cheese. You have some uh, either canned tuna or tuna pouches. There's some jerky. Um, you could do Greek yogurt. And then finally, thinking about some of the heart healthy fats and that can include um, some nuts, nut butters or seeds. And yes, I do realize this requires a little extra planning and preparation, but before you know it, the days of making unhealthy choices at the snack bar will long be gone. Now, if you're unable to pack and need to pick something up along the way, try to choose things like grilled chicken salads, chicken or fish fajitas with rice and veggies, grilled chicken or turkey sandwiches, with a salad, fruit cup, maybe even a grilled chicken wrap. As much as you can, plan to eat at home by utilizing your crock pot, but if you must go out, maybe try to share your meals to avoid some of the excess calories. So when we come back, we're gonna show you a quick and easy granola bar recipe that you can make on your own. Hamilton was adopted from a rescue in 2008. He really likes to be around people. And as soon as I start to make my breakfast, Hamilton is right there. I get out my mat and I'm doing a downward dog and he's underneath. He's quite the pug about town. He gets invited to a lot of parties. He knows he's a pretty big deal. I mean, look at this little face. How do you not love him? and welcome back. So as I promised, I wanted to show you a quick, easy granola bar recipe that can be used before a workout or game. Now, Heather introduced me to this recipe. Uh, she actually introduced my son to the recipe and it quickly became a family favorite. The great thing about this recipe is that it's easy for your student athlete to pack, it meets their energy needs, and it tastes good. And the recipe is easy enough, your kid can make it on his own. For this recipe, you will need 
one cup of quick cooking or old fashioned oats, one cup of wheat germ, one cup of almonds, half a cup of dried fruit of your choice, half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon, half a teaspoon of salt, two large eggs, a quarter cup of honey, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, and a quarter cup of mini semi-sweet chocolate chips. All right, so the first thing we want to do is measure out some ingredients to put them in our blender. So I'm going to measure out one cup of our oats and a cup of wheat germ. If you don't have wheat germ, you could even substitute ground flaxseed here. <laughs> Always giving me trouble. Thank you, Heather. Uh -huh. That's awesome. cup of almonds. I'm just using unsalted almonds. Throw that in there. And now we're going to do a half a cup of dried fruit. I have a mixture. I brought raisins, cranberries, pineapple, and apricots. But again, this is your choice. Whatever your, your favorites are, you can include in this. Um, you don't have to use my favorites. So just put a couple pieces of each in here. And then, can't forget the cranberries. So, roughly a half a cup. If it's a little bit more, that's okay too. I'm going to use a half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. And finally, a half a teaspoon of salt. And if you're using a kosher salt, I always say you don't have to use quite as much because it's a coarser grain. Um, the flavor is enhanced, so I use a little bit less than half a cup. Or, I'm sorry, half a teaspoon. All right, put the blender on. Now you can use a food processor here. I'm going to use a blender because that's what I have. And we're just going to grind this up. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna keep this in here for a little bit and Heather's gonna help us with so gonna, the wet, the wet ingredients. ingredients. So first you want to take a um, quarter cup of honey. I'm gonna move this out of your oh, way so you don't. Thank you. Squeeze that in there. Honey's great because then you don't have to use white sugar, right? Yeah, definitely. So there's the honey, um, and then you're going to do two eggs, and the teaspoon. I know you just gave it to me. Here it is. So we need to do a teaspoon of vanilla. This is actually half a teaspoon, so I'm going to do two of these. Whisk this together. This is kind of like anytime you make a cake, you always do your dry ingredients yep, and your exactly. wet ingredients. <laughs> and the kids always like pushing the blender, put, pushing the button on the blender and helping right. with the mixing part. All right, so after that's put together, we're just going to add our dry ingredients to our wet ingredients. Now, because it's I used a blender, it's going to get stuck a little bit, but that's all right. Just kind of coax this through. One of my favorite dried fruits to add to this is uh, dried cherries are really good, too. Oh, that would be good. All right, good enough here. Okay. The key here is you want that dried fruit to be really chopped up, um, almost the size of a, a lentil or a small bean. And then we don't want to forget the chocolate chips, so we're going to add a quarter cup of these. Do you want the spoon for that? Yeah, they're a little stuck in there with the honey. And so we're going to fold this in. And now, before you put this in the oven, you want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Before you, did you spray this already? I or did not. not. Nope. Okay, so we're going to make sure we spray our, our 
container or our dish. You can also use an eight by eight square uh, pan as well, just so it doesn't stick. And then, probably maybe face it the other way. Oh, sorry. <laughs> here, so I'll my, hold this. And I'll take this out and the spoon would be easier here. Just set that here. Got it. Perfect. Okay. All right. And so we put that in the bottom of our dish. And then, like I said, we're going to bake that in a 350 degree oven for roughly 18 minutes or until the, the sides become golden brown. Um, I think yesterday, uh, maybe my oven's not working great, but I had to put it in for closer to 22 minutes. So just check it at that 18 minute mark and then see what you need to do from there. All right. There you have it. Completed product looks <laughs> just like this. You can um, cut them up into smaller squares, but I like to make it look more like a granola bar. So easy, tasty, and gets the job done. I hope you enjoyed watching today's episode and learned a few things. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.